fetuses. We were told and reported just last week that Border Patrol agents have been told that they are not to turn away any women who say that they are pregnant. If they merely assert that they're pregnant, they get a free pass into the country. And of course, they have no way to determine if they're pregnant or not. Now, to contrast that to an amazing difference in the way that Americans are treated, take a look at this uh, journalist who went on a family vacation to Canada. This is a journalist from Reason Magazine. His name is Roger Van Bakel of Reason.com. He went up into Canada after a vacation in Maine, and as they were looking at his passports, they asked him if he had a letter of permission for his children, who also had passports, to travel with him. Now, from when I was looking at this, the first thing I remember was I had gone to Canada as a child. I never had a passport. And we didn't need passports to go back and forth on that border. I remember in 2002, after everybody started to get paranoid about everything, after September 11th, they started stepping up security, obviously. We still were able to take our children. We had passports at the time. Our children had passports at the time because we had gone abroad. But we didn't take them with us. We didn't really think we needed them to go into Canada. And the Canadian government didn't require it. We were able to pass into Canada and just show them our driver's license. And they looked at us and said, fine, you can go. When we came back, however, we were treated like terrorist suspects. We got the going over just like this guy did. They almost didn't let us back in. I didn't know at that point that they were requiring passports. But this guy has been asked by the Border Patrol agents if he's got permission to travel. And he kind of pushed back on that question. And then they got angry. He said, I realized then that just a little bit of pushback was all these guys needed to get them going. They, pulled, they got him out of the car. They got very aggressive with him, started searching his car. And he says, all right, I'm going to videotape this for my own protection. When he did that, they physically took it out of his hand and got very aggressive with him. He says, wait a minute. As a journalist, I can tell the world in writing whatever questions you're asking. And he says, in the U.S., anybody has that right. It's certainly not against the law. What's the difference between that and recording the conversation. Now, notice what the guy did. He, first of all, he made him re delete it, or he w wasn't going to let him go. But once he did delete the conversation, he told him he could go. We've seen that over and over and over again. If the government is doing something that they don't have any legal authority to do, if they're doing it under cover of law, and you challenge them, time and again, they will let you go. I want to point out Many of you might have remembered the Ramaki family. Uh, that's the German family who came here and got asylum in the United States uh, because they were fleeing the German homeschooling laws. You see, in Germany, they still have the anti-homeschooling laws that Adolf Hitler wrote. Adolf Hitler wrote the first laws to criminalize education, especially for parents to educate their own children. Those laws are still on the books, and they're very rough with parents who, who want to, to uh, educate their children at home. They get massive fines. They have the children taken away from Child Protective Services. There was another German family who did not leave Germany. They had their children taken away from, by, with Child Protection Services because they wanted to homeschool. They relented, put the children in government school, and the government still would not return custody of their children to the family. So this family immigrated to the United States. They sought asylum. They were granted asylum by an immigration judge. And everything seemed to be OK. They said they were fleeing religious persecution. They were homeschooling for religious reasons. And then Eric Holder got involved. And Eric Holder tried to overturn that immigration judge's asylum order. They took it all the way to the Supreme Court. They decided they were going to fight, and Homeschool Legal Defense Association represented them, as they do most homeschoolers. If you homeschool, you really need to be a member of this organization. They took it all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said they weren't going to hear it, and the next day, Homeland Security said, that's okay, we're going to give you permission to stay here. Not any other German uh, family is going to be allowed to stay here, but just you.
And they set up some very troubling precedents in that. Eric Holder said he didn't think denying people's right to homeschool their kids on religious grounds, he didn't think that was a denial of religious freedoms. Of course, they don't respect any of the First Amendment, either freedom of religion or freedom of speech. And you know what? You can't have either of those if you don't have freedom of education. We're going to be right back because I want you to understand how this applies. This has happened over and over and over again. If you fight them, they might let you go, but they're not going to change the law. They will stop it before it gets to that point. We'll be right back. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com. Spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM-1 from Terraganix. Life's getting better. Alex Jones here for InfoWars.com. In the month of July, we have got giant specials on everything at MadeIn1776.com. The already discounted Made in 1776 t-shirts are only 1776. We have the new belt buckles that in only two weeks of sale are very close to selling out. There's only 500 of each. We're talking about Made in America belt buckles and nickeled brass. This is more than a summer blowout special. This is a new declaration of independence but to expand the info war we're offering the equivalent of more than five months free right now when you get a membership at prisonplanet.tv for a limited time only 39.95 a year that's more than five months free off the regular price not just this july 4th weekend but the entire month of july at made in 1776.com molon Labe. you can take my gun from my cold dead hands Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. what it's like to be the bad man to be the sad man welcome back to the alex jones show i'm david knight and we were talking just before the break about this family that went into canada and when they came back they were asked 
They had their passports, but they were asked if they had permission to take their children with them. <laughs> and the, the guy who was actually a reporter for reason said, uh, do I need to have permission for my children? And at that point, they got kind of horsey with him. They started to inspect their car. And he says, all right, I'm going to record this for my own protection. That then turned them violent. And so they seized his phone. They demanded that uh, they were going to delete the the tape of the incident. But he said, hey, I have the freedom to do this. I can write about this. I'm a journalist. I can write about anything you say or do. And it's the same principle. And of course, it's been upheld over and over again that we do have a right to record. This is under color of law, illegal, illegal actions and intimidation by government agents. And we see this over and over again. And we see that when you push back against them, they let you go. I was just talking about how the German family, of course, this highlights also the hypocrisy of what they're doing, saying that they're trying to reunite uh, immigrant children with their parents who are in the States. And yet they were going to send this family who was homeschooling for religious reasons back to Germany, where the government was going to take the children away from the parents as they've done in the past. As they fought it all the way to the Supreme Court, even when the Supreme Court said we're not going to hear it, then they said, all right, you can, you can keep them. We've seen this happen over and over again. Look at John Corbett, who challenged the TSA. And then he got a pass to get on planes after that, after he sued them multiple times. We got Mark Baker, Baker's Green Acres in Michigan. He had all of his hogs taken away. They said, you're hogs because you are free range uh, raising your hogs outside and they then grow hair. He said, these are feral hogs. So we're going to take these away. They're not like, they don't look like the pigs that we have in the factory uh, pork system. So we're going to take them away. He fought them for years and he would have been bankrupted, except that he got contributions from other people. But they took those breeds of pigs away from all of the other Michigan farmers. But they eventually caved at the last minute after fighting him for three years, after coming very close to bankrupting him for this legal fight, they eventually at the last minute just backed off and said, okay, you're not going to be subject to these regulations, but everybody else is. So they leave the illegal law there. They stop it at the court system. They don't want it to go through. They don't want to set a precedent. They don't want to have the law overturned. They just make exceptions for people who fight them. We saw the same thing at the Bundy Ranch. The BLM had already driven all of the other ranchers out of business, just like the Michigan Department of Agriculture had driven out all these other free-range hog producers out of business. And yet, what do they do? They just come back and say, for you, we'll make an exception but not for anybody else. We're going to leave our illegal actions in place. Now, Obama, if you haven't heard, is meeting with heads of Central American states, and they are now looking at having children brought into this country. We, the American public, the American government, will fly children in from Honduras, giving them refugee status. But they will not give refugee status to a single family that comes here because they're going to have their children taken away with them from them if they educate them at home. That's the kind of dichotomy we see. We see that the government does not want people to have control over their children. To that end, they have come up with an idea. They're actually given $10 million to Yale University to fund personal robot trainers for children. And listen to the way they talk about this. They talk about deploying these robots into homes. That's actually their phrase. I was up on the Drudge Report. He highlighted that, that they're going to deploy these robots into homes and they're going to teach them English as a second language. So that's a large part of why they want to import these young children. They want to get them and they want to control them. The government wants to get rid of parents wants to move them out of the way so that they can raise the children themselves. They can't do that enough by extending the school year, by extending the school hours. So now they want to put robots into the homes. Listen to what the computer science professor at Yale University, principal investigator for the study said. He said, just like a good personal trainer, we want the robots to be able to guide the children toward a behavior that we desire. Who would that we be? Is that uh, the parents or is that going to be the government setting those priorities? He says, the need for this technology is driven by critical societal problems that require sustained personalized support to supplement the efforts of educators, parents, and clinicians. See, they kind of put the parents in there in the middle and between the educators and the psychologists, uh, you know, Melissa 
Harris Perry said, you got to get over this idea that you own your own children. No, you don't. You know, well, so, so what role do they see for parents? I don't know because they're saying that they want these robots to help them learn better eating habits, social cognitive skills. So what is it that parents are supposed to do? I don't know. Maybe they tuck them in at night. It's, it's not really clear. But what is clear is they want to build a healthy relationship, he says, of trust and respect between the child and the robot, not between the child and the parent. We're on what the mark.